Hmm. Now, tell me who you want. Get me Father Christmas. Father Christmas is still in New York. Do you still want him? Yes, please. Thank you. This is a home computer. It's been programmed to recognize certain phrases and then to dial out a telephone number associated with that phrase. In its memory, the phrase Father Christmas is linked with a telephone number which plays a message from Santa. And right now, it's dialing New York 976-3636. This is Santa Claus, and today I'm going to tell you about Christmas and George Washington. Mm. George Washington was the first president of the United States. Mm. His home is called Mount Vernon. It's in Virginia. It's a beautiful house. Yeah. Oh, sorry. One use for the home computer, then. And all thanks to the instructions it got from one of these, an audio cassette. And that's how the vast majority of the quarter of a million plus home computers are programmed to do whatever you want. This is the very latest, the BBC microcomputer, launched this week. This one has been programmed by this cassette, so you can draw with it, in this case, your own graphics. Over here, we've got the same computer, only a different cassette. And this one gives you VAT. Very boring. And finally, another version of the same computer. This one gives you the hideous Rubik Cube. OK, now the coded instructions on those cassettes are quite complicated, but they can be reduced to a series of bleeps. So, in theory, it ought to be possible to broadcast a computer program. And we're going to try it. So, if you're one of the quarter of a million people with a home computer like this one, or one like this, then you'll be able to join in. Now, those are two of the most popular. It may well work with other makes, so if you've got one, do try it. On this tape, we've recorded a program, and we've used a professional tape recorder rather than a cassette to ensure the very highest quality. And there are two ways for you to record it at home. Ideally, you should use a direct connection from the audio outlet of your television, which will be marked either earphone or hi-fi and it should be connected to the input of your cassette recorder. Well, that's the best way, but if your television doesn't have an audio outlet, you can try using the microphone. But you must keep absolutely quiet, in fact, total silence. Keep the microphone about nine inches from the loudspeaker, and a very strong warning at this point, if your set doesn't have an audio outlet, do not try to make a direct connection to the loudspeaker, whatever you do. It could be very dangerous. Now, some sets will turn off the speaker when you plug in the lead, so keep an eye on the screen for a message to tell you when to stop recording. OK, Kieran, ready? You're ready. Right. Well, get ready at home, then, because we're about to try it. So, Sue and everyone at home, start recording now. OK, you can stop recording now. Now, while Sue checks whether it's worked on our set here in the studio, oh, and you needn't try it till after the programme, a couple of tips. First, the programme is called TW. If your computer then requires a name to save a programme, use Load TW. Otherwise, just use the word Load. And secondly, if it doesn't work at first, well, try different volume settings. But you might be wondering, why this experiment at all? Well, it could be used to broadcast local shopping, best buys or save travel information. It's quick, at the speed of light, in fact, and it's very cheap. OK, Kieran, I've got it loaded up. I'm You've not sure it. what's going to happen here. Have we got a result? Well, it says a few things on the screen. Let's try and run it. Ah, well, I've obviously made an error here. It says error, but it's even misspelt that. So. Oh, dear. <laughs> and it hasn't even got your name on it. No, it should have my name, but normally... I think I know that this particular one has got even more on it, hasn't it? Oh, well, never mind. We know it's worked earlier today. Of course, this was the first ever live attempt, so perhaps True. we might have another crack at it later. In the meantime, perhaps I ought to draw your attention to the BBC's um, CFAC system. <laughs> right. What you should have got. If you continued by typing Y and then return, you should have seen your name added to the Tomorrow's World credits. Here they come. And the final name. If you used a computer like this one, then you would have received a simplified version. As you no doubt remember, I had problems in the studio last week. 
but judging by all your letters, thousands of people were successful. And the overwhelming message was, it worked. Any future transmissions will have to be broadcast outside normal hours, and that'll involve discussions between the BBC and the Home Office. And of course, there's also the question of who's going to pay.